All right, we are in the weekend round of the Winter Slopes Tournament in the Rookie Division. We're playing in the uh, Rookie Bracket, and we're playing in a Masters. Everybody in this bracket's a Master, either now or has been. They've got, uh, this guy's won two billion in his career on 3,500, so he's been playing a lot of high-level games in order to win that two billion. So you know he's got good clubs because he's playing up there at the top. Everybody in this bracket's like this. So it took a minus 24. There was, uh, when it all said and done, there was eight minus 24s that didn't qualify in the, in the opening round bracket that I was in. So you gotta assume that the other side, the other half that came was pretty similar. So everybody in this tournament shot a 24 or better. So if everybody plays, you should, you'll imagine 24 is all the way to the bottom. You know, there's always going to be that bottom 10 or so that didn't play or something happened and they screwed up at the beginning and then stopped or whatever. But we could potentially get 90 people playing 24 or better. So it's going to be super tight up at the top. And you absolutely cannot make any mistakes. And I have no idea what the people at the top are going to do. But... In my mind, the only way you can absolutely guarantee that you're going to get a win is with a 32. So in the, in the qualification round, we shot a minus 13, and then we shot a minus 27. So we, we don't have the best tiebreakers out there. It would have been nice to shoot a 14 and a 28 just so that we had what you know a clean round looks like. So it's going to be very tight as we go up, so we cannot afford to make any mistakes. So we're on hole number one. Let's go to Golf Clash Notebook and check out hole number one. So we're going to see how this works, and if it doesn't, then I'll take a break until all those videos upload. So I'm uploading videos and I'm recording videos and playing at the same time, so we'll see if we get any lag. So we're on hole number one. Par 3, extra mile on a katana. Here we go. In our extra mile bag, we're going to switch our big dog out. We had that on for hole number 18 in the opener. And we're going to switch to a katana. Extra mile katana, one backspin, maximum right hand side spin. We're going to put some curl on there, but less than half. I'm trying to work that number. And this is a this is one of those holes. Sure would be nice to start off with a hole in one. And you never know what you're going to get on this hole. So it could happen. That's the thing about these racetracks holes is you can always go into it with a really big positive outlook. <laughs> Looking down the barrel. All right, our opponent brought a apocalypse and a kingmaker, so it's going to give them a lot of a lot of side spin if they put that, all that on there. I'm trying to shoot for this spot up here so that they can dribble on at the top, get on the other side of those moguls, and have a have a straight shot down the hill. This could be really good. See how they got, came out there flat, they went out a little farther. It's going to be pretty close. No, yeah, that's deceiving. That's about a mile away. Alright. See how our lag situation is. Okay, so we're going to put our orange ring, blue ring combo, so we're just barely clipping it. We're putting on maximum side spin and one back spin. We're going to do a full wind adjustment. It's two six. It's about a ring and a third. Hold on a second. Okay. We are going to have to wait. We're getting serious lag. 
hopefully we can get through this hole serious lag yeah woo dodged the bullet on that I don't know what it was doing there when I took the when I tried to pull the wind out it was doing something weird it almost looked like I, I grabbed it wrong and I was actually not moving it right that happens sometimes you're actually moving the course instead of the ball guide Perfect. All right, we'll have to take like a 40 minute break and then I'll be back. So I'm gonna merge these together and what I'm gonna do because there's enough shots of the holes. I'm not gonna play these holes any different than what I played them before. We're in the, we're not gonna change our routine here. We're gonna, I what we have works. It's just, you have to, you have to play it clean and on some of these holes, you got to get a little bit of luck. And so, we can we can achieve the score we're looking for with the shots that we are bringing to this tournament. So we're not going to change anything at this point. We've practiced these shots all week, and we know the numbers. So. I'm not going to play any of these because I don't, I don't want to lose any of my hole-in-one opportunities. I absolutely do not want to get a hole-in-one in a shootout. All right. That was hole number one of the Winter Slopes Tournament in the, op or in the weekend round of the Rookie Division. Thanks for watching. All right, we're in the weekend round of the Winter Slopes Tournament. I'll combine hole number one and this hole. We're going to play nine holes straight through since we're on the weekend. And then we'll shoot, break it up into two different videos. So hole number two. All right. An extra mile and a katana. And we should already have that in our bag from the first hole. Extra mile and a katana. Okay, we're going to do a 10% wind adjustment, which has been, with the wind that we've been having, it's right at 4. <clears throat> but it's a tricky spot down there with the sand trap, and you got to make sure that you're not, uh, you're adjusting based off the ring width on the rough, not where it gets distorted in the sand. But it's been like a 3-6 wind, 3-4 I've been making a 4.0 wind adjustment. At least that's what it was in the opening round. We'll see where it is here. All right. This is a critical hole. It's very critical that we get an eagle on this hole every single time we play it. And you need to learn how to do all four shots. The two that are down the middle, one where you bounce over the sand and the one where you're doing the rough bump. Those are the first two that you need to get <clears throat> Excuse me, in your bag. You can do the front one without, any, uh, without anything spectacular. And you got to use a marlin ball when you do it. You need a zero power ball. Okay, so we're down in this area here. But just a little bit. Okay, we're going to do a four wind adjustment. A little shy of, a little shy of four. And we just need to hit perfect. And we hit great to the left. Which didn't do us any favors, but that is the shorter side. So you have more chance if you head to the left of getting out of the rough.
because it's shorter on that side than if you hit it great to the right. If you hit it great to the right, you lengthen it out and you put yourself more towards the sand. The deal is, is if you play that for that shot right there conservative and you don't try and get greedy, you don't try and like get it right to the hole, you don't, I mean, it would be nice to get a hole in one on this, but the real goal is to get eagle every time you come to this hole. So if you don't get greedy, if you set it up in the right spot, you can make that great error and it'll still end up on the hole on the green. Isn't it perfect? Eagle. That's what I'm talking about. All right, we made it past the first hurdle. Hole number two and hole number eight, those are critical. And we gotta play, we gotta, we gotta pick up all those. We gotta shoot the minus 28 and stay on track on those holes where we need to pick up that shot. And then on the holes where we can really go for it, we gotta hope that we get some magic. Alright, that was hole number two of the weekend round, so let's go to hole number three. Hole number three. Alright, my favorite hole. We're going to be using bag number two, that's our accurate bag, and we're going to be using a katana. Alright, off we go. Hole number three. This is a hole right here that would be awesome to get an albatross on because this isn't one of the holes that you're really thinking albatross. You're just trying to secure your eagle. So there's a spot. I've been thinking all week that like the middle of that shadow was the best spot and that's a good spot don't get me wrong but being up there towards the front of it gives you just just that little teeny bit it's just a few yards but it really makes that second shot you can get it a little closer all right I'm do a 20 percent wind adjustment here okay we want to be up towards the red line and we want to be we give ourselves plenty of room here. We don't have to get any kind of greedy. And that's a 2 8, so that'd be 3 6. That'd be a 3 4. And then we're going to just put on a little bit of curl just to bring it back into the fairway. Get it great on the inside. That's why we left ourselves plenty of room down there. <clears throat> the, f the risk is, is that if you hit it great on the inside and you put too much curl on it, you'll end up in that sand. And we're not in that bad of a spot from where we're at. So normally we'd be up here in the front of the shadow, right up towards the front of it. And we've actually, I was trying to hit kind of in the middle, but we're inside of that. And so we should actually have a pretty decent shot. This might be... This might be the best landing zone we've had. Our opponent blew through that shadow, so they're gonna have a tougher shot. They'll still have they still got part of that landing pad visible, so Seven, so we're going to take out about three five of it. We're going to leave just a little teeny bit in. We're going to put just a little bit. Oh, we hit it great on the inside. We should have put a little bit of power if we're going to hit it there. We might be short just 
just barely tapped that. If we'd hit in the rough right there and got hung up, it would have uh, dribbled down the green. That's about as aggressive as I want to get on that hole, and that was that was more aggressive than I normally get, and I'm still a mile away. <laughs> See, our opponent, if our opponent hits great to the left, they're in big trouble. Yeah, perfect, excellent. Nice angle. Getting on the inside like our opponent did right there, that's, a, that's tough to do. All right, perfect. In the hole, eagle. Okay, we did what we needed to accomplish in the first quarter, in the first set, first third. Now this next third is critical because we got a hole in one, go for Albie, go for eagle. So we got three holes here that normally we would be shooting birdie, eagle, birdie, but we have that hole in one, Albie, eagle shot. So these next three holes are super critical. We've got to pick something up in these next three holes. We want to get a shot up on the in both rounds. I mean, if we get them both in one round, that'd be great. But I mean, we need to pick. We need to pick up two shots at a minimum. I mean, that's thirty. If we want a guaranteed win, we're going to have to shoot thirty-two. So we got. This is where we got to get our work done. Is on these next three holes. All right, we're on hole number four. Hole number four. All right, this is the first of the part three. So we're using a sniper and a nav. Because I don't have any... I don't have any one power wind balls in here. I don't have any wind balls, I don't think. Those are two power. We could probably get away with that, but that that would change our red line. And right now we're at the we can just get our our long iron in, or excuse me, our wood in. So if we bring a bigger power ball, then we're not going to be able. We're going to be really at the red line. So we can't go in with anything more than a than a one power ball. And I think all of the wind balls that I have in this account are two power balls. So we're going to have to go with an av. And we're gonna put on a little teeny bit less backspin than what we've been doing and try and run it up to the hole. So we're gonna use a sniper and a nav. We got our sniper, we got our nav. Off we go. All right, we're gonna come at this a little different. We've been using about four and a half to five backspin. And I'm gonna see down there on the red line if I've got enough room to use just a little bit less backspin and try and run it up. But we'll see. I may end up doing the four and a four and a half to five, just because the wind may force us to do it. Because we're having to pull the wind back towards us, and that's back towards the red line. So we'll have to see. I think we're going to probably have to stick with the four and a half to five. Okay, so there's our red line. Yeah, we're gonna have to stick with the four and a half to five. And we're at minimum club, so that's about one five per ring, so that's about a two ring pull. We're gonna hit it, just try and hit it perfect. Perfect. Get in the hole. Get in the hole. That's what I am talking about right there. Awesome. Woo! Yes, sir. That is that is fantastic. Whew. 
I played the qualifying round and the opening round and just was trying to shoot clean and didn't pick up any of the extra shots. I shot a 13 and a 27 and it's a, we just need to stay on track and shoot our 28 and try and pick up as many things like that as we can. That is what I am talking about right there. Whew. Now it's all about playing it one hole at a time and not thinking about where you're at or what you're doing. So we're on hole number five. We're on hole number five, maybe. This is the big hole. This is the hole right here. We have, we need an albatross on this hole. I mean, around this is this is the hole right here. I mean, we don't have any alba. We haven't got any albatross this week, and tiebreakers are a huge deal. And if you got an albatross, especially in this final round, that's going to give you, you know, if it gets down to that point. So we really need an albatross here. So we got an extra mile, a kingmaker, and a backbone, and a hornet. So extra mile, we're going to switch this bag out right here. Extra mile, sniper, backbone, hornet. we got all of our big accuracy clubs. We're definitely not looking to be within our sniper range, but we're bringing all the big stuff, all the big accuracy, and our usual suspects to get us out of trouble. And we, do not, we don't want to use those ever. We want to just carry those bottom three in our bag and never even think about them being in our bag. That's the goal. That's really the secret to playing this game is to stay in the fairway. Stay in play. I mean, you're going to get on those holes and somebody's going to get the eagle that's that's really tough to get or they're going to, you know, sink some big shot and, and do it. But if you play consistently in the fairway and you're always using your best clubs, those best four, you're going to win more often than you lose. Because a lot of people are going to end up in the fairway or in the rough where they can't get on into, and you stayed in the fairway and always gave yourself a shot. All right, here we go. Okay, I kind of liked where I set it up last time. I I started off. I was about half a ring, half the blue ring in the rough down there. And then I moved it back a little bit so the blue ring was right on the transition between the rough and the fairway and it seemed to flatten the ball out and it was way too short. So the last time I was here I actually put it back to where I was and I was in my short iron range. I would prefer to take this shot with my long iron but it either one's going to work. Isn't it perfect? <coughs> Goes flat and scoots across. That's exactly what we want to do. We want to get ourselves up there. We're doing a layup shot with our extra mile, trying to just get it into a spot so that we can give ourselves the best shot for Albie here. We're going to kind of balance those out. We're going to take a full wind adjustment. There's 4 2, so we're a little shy of that. I put some curl on it to bring it back into the fairway. Isn't it perfect? I'm just trying to get it to scoot out there and get into our minimum long iron range. It'll either be in our minimum long iron or it'll be in our maximum short iron. So if it's in our maximum short iron, it's 1.1 .1 per ring. It's in our minimum backbone, it's 2.1 per ring. And we're going to put on, if it's our backbone, we're going to put on two top spin, no side spin. And we're going to find the spot up there where that two top spin is the, is the ticket. And that's where we're going to take our shot. If it's in our 
Hornet, it's probably going to be more four to five top spin, no side spin. And our opponent, I never can figure out when people are doing that stuff, why they don't just put it in the spot and adjust it and then adjust out the wind. They're trying to do both at the same time. And they're not getting the full use of their ball guide. All right, we got a serious Albi shot here. Okay, Let's see if we're still in our Hornet. Oh, we're a minimum, minimum back backbone. So that's two top spin. We're gonna find the spot where that two top spin works. And we're at two one per ring. So there's four two. So there's. That's two one, that's about a ring and a half. And we're gonna give it just a perfect shot. Oh, we hit it great to the right. That means we'll end up great to the right. Oh, look at that, that was an Albi. That would have been in the hole if I'd hit perfect. Damn it. Oh! That was a can't blow opportunities like that that's why you that's that's the deal is is we're trying to give ourselves these perfect shots by doing these layups if you watch my if you watch my videos you know when I'm in the practice round I truly am practicing and I'm really just trying to get that layup shot I'm not really I'm you know once you get there you're you're gonna play out the round but my whole goal is to in practice rounds is to make sure that I figure out exactly what to do with the drive so that I'm in the perfect spot for that shot to the green. And when you execute that and you're in that perfect spot and then you blow a shot like that because you don't hit perfect, it's it's a, it's a missed opportunity. All right. That was hole number five. All right, we're on hole number six. Let's go back and refresh our memory on hole number six. Hole number six is an eagle shot that's not normally an eagle. Okay, so once again, we're bringing our, we're bringing our accurate clubs. And we're bringing the same exact bag. Now we're switching back to our quarterback. Quarterback sniper, those are the clubs. And we're gonna use a katana because that puts us in our power range that we're looking for. So it's going to put us about mid-Saturn. Or excuse me, mid-Sniper. Mid-Sniper is about 1-3 per ring. Well, we've been working on this shot too, but once again, you don't hit perfect you won't you don't you really can't learn you can't make adjustments if you're not hitting perfect I need to start letting it go by more times I'm trying to snap it off on the third try and the third's not working so what I need to do is switch over to the fourth and start hitting it when it, the needles going from the right to the left I normally hit when the needles going to the left to the right and I need to switch it up And I may make a few mistakes the first few times I do it, but uh, maybe I want to be back a little from the red line. So we're going to try and straighten that ball out. We want to put about three and a half top spin. Okay, so we're going to line it up. There's one, two, three, four, and a little. A little shy of half. Isn't it perfect? I didn't want to risk that on this shot. <laughs> it went by that time. I was like, ah, no. <laughs> you can, if you use a quarterback on this shot, you can hit it great to the left or the right, and you'll still end up in the middle. But you know, ah, I saw somebody the other day hit a shot on this, 
And it was the best way that I've ever seen done on it. And what they did is they started off up here and they bounced over the sand and they clipped the rough on the other side and it dribbled them right out into the front here. And they had an awesome, awesome shot with their backbone. But if you're going to do the layup shot up here, this is a layup shot and you got a four power ball. You don't need to use a four power ball to do a layup shot. You can do this shot with a, you know, with a quasar. You can do it with a marlin, but... A quasar is going to give you that little bit of power and that extra side spin on the second shot. But getting up here, you can use any ball to get you up there. You're not using all the stuff that's in the club, so why not use a more accurate club? You're going to have to learn how to use, play with other clubs in your bag. Okay, there's our minimum. There's our max. So right about there is mid. We're going to work that right towards the hole. So we're at 1-3, so there's 3-9, so we're just a titch over three rings. I think my angle was a little bad there, but that's all right. Isn't it perfect? And we had a little too much on it. A little too much. That's all right. That's a low percentage hole, but man, we we really missed that Albion five. That's that is the heartbreaker right there. We got a serious hole in one shot on this next hole, though. This next hole is absolutely dead serious. We've been really, really close. It really just boils down to perfect. All of these shots, when you're coming towards the green, if you make the right, you know, if you have the right ball, it's going in the right direction and you made the right wind adjustment. pick up some shots though this next hole hole number seven is the last it's the first of the last three and it's the last hole that we have you know really serious shot of picking up one there is an albi shot on hole number nine but this next hole gives us our best shot And we will be forfeiting. Good luck. All right. We're on hole number seven. Let's see what we got for hole number seven. All right. This is this. There's two ways to play this. We're doing the backspin shot. And we're doing it with a katana. Let's see if we got a Saturn here. We got a Saturn there. So we got a Saturn and a Katana, and it's 1.9 per ring because we are right at the red line. All right. I think we actually have a live opponent here. Okay, so there's our red line. We want to be out just a little. Orange rings out. Okay, it's one nine per ring, so there's two, so six. It's about a third. It's about a ring and a third.
Oh, he had a gray to the left. Can't put those balls in the hole if you hit it. Great. Oh. Just get a string of perfect shots here. We could really pick our game up. It's frustrating because uh, I just need to get back into my perfect rhythm. I used to hit most of my shots perfect, and I was playing. I only played on a tablet. I played on a phone when I first started, and then I started playing on a tablet because it was just a much better view. And I got into a really good, perfect string, and then I really started playing well. And then I went back to work, and in the field I didn't bring my tablet because I, I used my phone. I uh, have gotten off my perfect rhythm. And I have a tablet again now, so I just need to start playing. I just got it here last week, so I'm still getting used to it. Still buying stuff for it. I'm trying to get it all set up. I want to start streaming the weekend rounds. Got a birdie on hole number seven, which was not totally unexpected, but it would have been nice to give ourselves a little bit better shot at the uh, hole in one. We will be forfeiting. Okay, we're in hole number eight. Hole number eight is going to be critical. I'm going to make hole number eight. So we got an extra mile, a kingmaker, max topspin. And we're not going to be going up against the nubs. We're going to just let the ball travel and try and stay further to the right, or excuse me, further to the left so it's shorter. The, long, the farther out here you get, the longer it gets, the, the longer it takes for that ball to get out of that rough. So we want to stay to the right. Stay to the right. It's kind of why we switched to a kingmaker. A kingmaker gives us a little bit more side spin. And even though if we put maximum top spin, we only get like maybe a sliver, like a third more side spin. That it, any side spin we can get is going to help us here. Okay, I think that's all we need. And we're taking the wind out, so it's helping us so we don't have to we don't have to take out as much wind. All right, I need an eagle. I need to get on in one. I'd like to be in the hole so we don't have to bring out the putter. I'm not sure I put the putter in the bag. We're gonna get a bot this time. Uh, maybe. Nice fish. All right, max top spin. Every single bit of side spin we can get. We want to try and land right here where the where the snow starts when you're coming from the sand up there. And the further out you get this way, that it just gets just a little teeny bit longer. And so sometimes you get caught up there. And with a katana, if you're not taking the wind out, you don't have to max overpower that shot. And if you do, you you know, you can't use all the all the stuff. Our opponent hit to the right, which made it longer. And in their case, it might have helped them out. Nice shot. 
whatever it takes to get on here. I mean, everybody's going to have a little bit different technique. So you can watch somebody and go, oh, that might not work. And then they do it and it works. So it's everybody's got their own little technique here. Whatever, whatever technique you have, the goal is to try and make sure you can repeat that technique over and over again. Okay, so we got a 3-2 wind. It's about a ring and a half. And we're going to put on some curl. We hit it great on the inside. We put a little more curl on it than I normally do, so we might be all right. We'll see when it hits. If it gets caught up, now it got caught up. Damn it! Now we got some work to do. We got some work to do. It's all a matter of hitting great. And our opponent is in the hole, exactly where we'd like to be. We got this shot though. We just have to hit, we absolutely have to hit this shot perfect. I mean, we got no shot. We got no choice. And the wind's kind of going with us. But it's going to move the ball over just a little. We hit it great on the on the wrong side. We had a great to the right or a perfect probably would have went in. But we adjusted for the wind in that direction. Damn it, we dropped the shot. Oh, that's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking that we just can't play a clean round. I hit it on one side and I miss it on the other. That is just pitiful. Pitiful. I am pissed now. Extra mile and a big dog for sure. We're going to take a kingmaker. Because we're taking the wind out on both, in both sides. We're not going to use any more than three topspin on the drive, and we're not going to use. We're going to be very gentle on the on the approach. We're going to try and do the little teeny bit of topspin, and really go for albatross. I am pissed. I'm playing. Am I playing the same guy again? I think I'm playing the same guy again. few tourneys. Just a few. How much has he won? Four billion. He's been around. Played 7,900 games. He's going out there into the spot using a Thor's hammer. Awesome club. Take three nine outs, so that's just about two rings. I'm gonna put some curl on it to bring it back into the court back into the fairway. And we hit a great, like two great to the right. I don't know what I was thinking there. I'm still upset about the last hole. I need to get it out of my head. We're at 353. We really kind of wanted to be about halfway up, but we're we're in the spot. We're in the line, but we're back just a little farther. So we'll have to work. We're, we will probably have to do a rough bump. So we may have taken ourselves out of the true Albi shot here. If we have to do the rough bump, we're going to play it safe and we're going to stay away from that sand. We're going to stay a little more to the left.
Hey, at least they made it over. But that's a combination of bringing the wrong ball and the wrong club for that second shot. So we're going to have to do the sand shot. Or excuse me, the rough bump. We're two six, so that's about a ring and a half. And we're gonna put just a little bit of curl. We want it to make sure it goes in that direction. We had a great to the right. I'm gonna switch sides because I am gonna I am gonna keep doing that. We're in the we're in the in the fairway right there. Nice little pitch. It's better if you can get right there to the fringe. It's hard if you put too much topspin on it. It's hard to uh, it's hard to adjust it because when you pull it back for whatever reason, the contour of the course down there, it, it stretches that out, and it almost doesn't help you. So it's hard if you do that rough bump to carry it f fast enough to get it up onto the green where you're up on the putting surface. If you're going to go for the albatross, you need to be up there far enough. And we had the distance as far as from the tee, but we were at the wrong, we were back probably eight or nine yards is, is how the game measures it. If we'd had that eight or nine yards, we could have tried the, the shot where we're just barely on the fairway going right at the hole. I shot this shot in the opening round and we're in the qualifier, excuse me, and I missed this shot. Hitting perfect. It started to get a little lag right there. I'm lucky I hit that perfect. Get in the hole. Whew. That was close. All right, I'm not, not happy with our front nine. Oh, that is just absolutely brutal. We did everything we were supposed to do and we made one bad shot. And one bad shot is the difference between giving ourselves a shot for a top three and just being part of the crowd. All right, where are we? All right, we have finished nine. We are at minus 14, which is not, we, we should be where the guy in 27th is at. We had a shot, we were shot up, and we dropped it on hole number eight. If we wanna have any shot at the top, you know, we just put all, picking up that shot on the front, and if we would have been able to hang on to it, would have really set us up for the back nine. Now we're, we're under huge pressure on the back nine. And it would have been nice to just go in and just start playing a clean round, looking for one extra shot to try and get us a 30. It's going to take that in order to win this bracket. I have no idea what the people are going to end up at the top, but it's going to take, it's going to take a 30 or better to win. And I don't have tiebreakers. This guy Josh, if he drops a shot to get even with us, and his open round's 27 and he's a 14, I don't have the tiebreakers on him. I got a 27 and a 13. So there's a lot of these people that have shot great. The average score coming into this round was minus 24. So everybody in this group has got the potential of popping off a monster score today. All right, that was hole number nine of the Winter Slopes Tournament in the Rookie Weekend Round. Thanks for watching.